internet, you need to have your own domain name and hosting. This is very simple to do. First, you need to go to a place where you can buy a domain. It's the place I like to use is called GoDaddy, and you can go there at GoDaddy.com. There are other ones you can use as well, like Namecheap.com and several others. Once you're here, all you have to do is sign up for a free account. Once you're signed in, you'll see a screen something like this. And now all you need to do is go and search for an available domain. Just go to Domains and click on it. Here you can do a domain search. Now there are lots of different kinds of domains that you can get as you can see here. But you are always best to find a .com one if, any, if at all possible. It depends on what kind of application you're looking for as to what your domain name is going to be. For instance, if you're doing a specific niche, say for instance on dog training, you might want to find a domain that fits that, such as dogtraining.com. Very unlikely that one will be there, but you, you would type it in down here in the search box. Maybe you put a dash in it. And then click search. And it tells you that it's already taken. And then it'll give you some suggestions down here. If you don't like any of those, just go ahead and search for a different one. Another way is to do it is to buy a one domain name and put all of your sites, no matter what the niche is, on that one domain. To do that, what you would want to do is have sort of a general purpose informational type domain. So you might want to put on here to have a domain name such as web info about or something like that. And then do a search. Okay, so at this point, webinfoabout.com is available. So if you registered that, you could put your sites into subfolders. For instance, if you had your first site was going to be on dogs, you could have your website for that webinfoabout.com slash dogs. If your next website you put up is on jewelry, you could have webinfoabout.com slash jewelry, etc. So you could put an unlimited number of sites on one domain if you wanted to do it that way. This will save you some money. It isn't quite effective as buying one domain for each site, but it is a way to get started very cheaply. Domains generally cost about $9.95 per year to register it. After you've registered your domain, you need to go and find a hosting provider. Just below this video, we have a suggestion for you to use. That hosting provider has cPanel hosting with Fantastico on a Linux server, and that's what we suggest that you use. Now, once you've gone and set up your hosting, all you do is you pay for the package you want, and they'll ask you how many gigabytes you want of disk space and bandwidth and so on. Bandwidth is the amount of data transfer or the amount of traffic that you're allowed on your website. Once you've done that, they will email you or tell you what you need to set your name servers to. This makes your domain point at your hosting account. It generally takes up to 24 to 48 hours for your domain to point there. So now what you do is you go and find the domain. So you go to My Domains and a list will come up. And here's a list of domains here. So what you would do is you would go into the domain that you want to set the name servers for. Just click on it. Now, depending on who you're using for a registrar, it could be slightly different, but this is GoDaddy's interface. So you just click there and it brings up another one, another screen. And you'll see here that we have name servers. If you click on that, this is where you can set the name servers. This is what it's set at right now. To set your name server, just click on custom name servers and then put the name server that your hosting company gives you in here. Once you've done that, click OK at the bottom here and it will go and propagate across the internet. Like I say, that can take up to 24 to 48 hours. A note about finding hosting, you should go with some Linux hosting with cPanel. 
I do not personally suggest you use GoDaddy's hosting. I personally do not like the interface, but that's just me. So you can choose that if you want to. Okay, so once this is all propagated, you can actually sign into your cPanel just by typing in your domain name, whatever it is, slash cPanel. Remember, you won't be able to do this till after it propagates. So in this case, I typed it enzyte-site.com slash cPanel, keyed in my username and password, and it brought up my hosting control panel. Another note about hosting that I should mention, make sure that you have Fantastico as you are able to install a lot of different applications automatically using Fantastico. So that's it. That concludes the video series on how to set up a domain name and find hosting.